Hi everyone, I'm Cullen Haynes and I love lawyers and welcome to the LHL Story Series. Thanks everyone. I'm sitting here with Talitha Fishburn from Wardell Chambers. Um, needs no introduction. Great barrister and we're happy to have you on the show there, Talitha. Delighted to be here, Cullen. Oh, in Cullen's oh. Corner at Clarence. Cullen's Corner at Clarence and, you know, shout out to the Clarence team as well. Shout out to them, absolutely. <laughs> now we're going to start off um, with our first question as okay. always, Talitha. We always start off with the show. If you were to describe your life using film titles, um, what would it be and why? Well, you said titles. Plural, so I'll take the opportunity to expand a bit. I'd start with Gone in 60 Seconds, Life Just Goes Way Too Quickly. It does, that doesn't it? But also a bit of Country Western, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. But at Clint the Eastwood. end of the day, Clint Eastwood, Please. Life is Beautiful. La Vita Bella. La Dolce Vita. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Fantastic. And of the three, which one would you like to be like the experience? The last one? Definitely Clint Eastwood. Oh, okay. <laughs> the ugly. And, and as a barrister, you probably see that all the time, right? On a daily basis. Oh, fantastic. Um, what I'd love to know, um, I like the origin stories. Everyone has a great origin yes. story or the hero story. I'd love to know what Talitha was like in high school. Well, you'd have to uh, engage with my classmates in relation to that. Okay. Um, but I like to think I was a fair player uh, back in high school days. Yes. Um, it's going back a while, though. <laughs> so is there, is there a comment on it or is it in um, terms of, like, was law always on the, on the oh, cards for you? Or? So was law on the cards? Yeah. Mm. I would say that there were legal murmurings um, developing at some point probably in high school. Um, in fact, there's a family favourite story, okay. and it's to the effect that it was a winter barrel, very cold, about year nine, and my dad, for some reason, as a landlord, was dragged in, into some very unfair legal proceedings in the barrel local court. And uh, he was trying his best, and I was there because it was school holidays, and for some reason, as amicus, I stood up and I assisted, and, well, suffice to say, we were successful. And the rest is history, as <laughs> the rest they say. Is history. And um, <laughs> perhaps going even further, like at life as a barrister, what inspired you to make, I guess, that transition? To make that transition, so in all honesty, a few friends had taken the plunge and um, I tried a few different things. I was a solicitor at a corporate law firm, which was excellent training. And then I had an opportunity to be at a major bank on secondment, which was, again, a wonderful interface into the law. Yes. And uh, through that experience, I got to do some, um, some work in Cape York. And it was a conversation in the middle of nowhere where someone just said to me, um, and so, what, what else could there be for someone who's in the law? And I said, oh, there's this thing called the bar. And they said, your eyes are lighting up. Um, you seem to quite like this idea. And uh, I said, oh, but, you know, I'm young and it's mostly for males and, you know, it's quite oh, difficult. Okay. Um, but he said, but why wouldn't you try it? I mean, you can always go back to what you're doing. And so for me, um, it's a very obvious um, context, but I decided to take the plunge Fantastic. at that point. And the legal profession is all the better for it as well. <laughs> now, um, Talith, we obviously connected on LinkedIn. Yes. Um, and I found your content absolutely engaging. Oh, uh, very you, differently Colin. to because we deal with a lot of barristers and you're doing things yes. very differently. Um, has that been an active strategy for you? Do you think um, the legal profession and barristers in particular need to use mediums like social media more and like innovate and take risks like that? What are your thoughts on that? Um, okay, so I think it's very much an individual decision and we are sole practitioners and we have the right to um, approach our business you know, as we wish. And yes. Some of the barristers prefer more traditional means of advertising and approaching the market. Um, when I first came to the bar, which wasn't so many years ago, mm. it um, was partly considered to be somewhat unusual or unconventional for a barrister to even have a business card. And that's just seven years ago. Wow. And things have certainly moved ahead um, a lot since that time. Um, for me, it's a wonderful opportunity to engage more broadly with the market. And my motivation, I think, with engaging with forums such as LinkedIn is twofold. For me, okay. it's engaging with contemporary, contemporaneous issues. So I might be dealing with a, a case or dealing with a point of law and I get to expand upon that and um, make it user-friendly um, for a wider audience. So there's that piece. But it's also this notion of um, disabusing some of the stereotypes um, that might be formed 
about the legal profession, about lawyers, about barristers, and reaching out to people and presenting an authentic front as to who we are, um, what we do, and what our lives are like as professionals. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to engage and um, I've formed friendships and business alliances through it. Oh, great, great. And um, Including your good self. Uh, and, and thank you so much. And present company accepted. Uh, in terms of, um, I guess we've had this conversation before, like the masks we wear as professionals, yes. like yeah. um, as a finance professional, the three-piece I put on, you're, <laughs> you're like, sometimes you have to put that mask on and, yes. um, you know, when you're dealing with the banks and whatnot. Do you think as a, as a legal professional, as a barrister, when you hold on to that mask too long or that role, that um, there's, there's a risk you might be, it might be lost in translation? Do you think like bringing that authenticity you spoke about is actually good, that vulnerability sometimes to show that? Absolutely. So I think that masks can, um, well, do. It's not, a, it's not a matter of can. Masks do hinder and they do obscure. And invariably, um, the mask is going to be ripped off at some point, either through your own doing or through someone else's. So um, I would strongly advocate that people don't employ the use of masks um, in their professional life or, for that matter, in any aspect of their life. Um, yes. However, um, I think we should... Do you want me to keep going? Keep going. Oh. You're doing really well. Okay. <laughs> why, why? I just noticed that this is going to be cut, right? Yes. Yeah. No, keep going. It's okay. great. Um, however, I think it's important to distinguish between masks and uh, different roles that we might employ in different contexts. Okay. So naturally we have um, different contexts in which um, we play, um, whether it's professional, whether it's social, uh, whether it's a family or community setting. Yes. And um, naturally we have different guises in these yeah. different roles. So if I'm engaging with a child, I'm not myself that I might be when I'm engaging with a judicial officer. Okay. But I think that if we have at our core um, the same set of values that guide us, um, there's still that authenticity piece coming through and refreshingly um, in modern times, uh, authenticity is, is such a cherished notion. So. Definitely. And you can tell when someone's been, like, especially on, on your LinkedIn feed, yes. someone's been authentic or it's yes. been contrived. You can spot it in nanoseconds, really. Yes, yeah, no, that's right. And I, I think consistency of voice, um, yeah. consistency of, of approach is so important in all sorts of forums. Great. And uh, one of the things that endear me towards you, Talitha, not only are you a very successful barrister, is that you're also an accomplished orchestral violinist. Is that right? Uh, yes, I enjoy. <laughs> Just a little plug there. Uh, I do enjoy music, yes. and I've played um, violin for many years yes. now in, in quite a few different ensembles. So yes, it's it's a passion of mine. And is there a particular piece you like to play? Um, <laughs> in, the, in the courtroom, you play your um, opposition of the violin sometimes. Uh, or? No, unfortunately, I can't resort to that prop in the courtroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but in terms of pieces that I like, I really enjoy romantic um, symphonic works. Um, so as a violinist in an orchestra setting, um, that to me is probably the most fulsome and dramatic of sounds um, that we can make. So um, composers like Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, um, Dvorak, there's some of my favourites. Lovely. And uh, Mozart's on that list as well, I believe. Is that oh, right? yes, yes. One cannot forget Mozart. No, one can. And um, one of our original conversations is that I'm a big fan of Amadeus. And yes, it's, yes. it's a fantastic movie, fantastic film. film. Um, and obviously, being Mozart, one of your favourite composers, is there a particular piece that if you had to listen on repeat, what would it be? Oh, so what would it not be? <laughs> yes. um, if I could just choose one, I think it would be the Symphony um, 40, which is in G minor. That's 4-0, G four zero. minor. <laughs> and it was composed the same year that Australia was discovered, so 1788. Wow, yes. okay. Well, I'm going to put that in the show notes for anyone wanting to listen to that. Yes. And you can be the judge yourself. <laughs> and is there, um, do you play music when you get home from work? Uh... Um, so I've got a bit of an anecdote about that. I think okay. that um, <laughs> music is a wonderful segue to transport us from our work environment to a personal or to a social setting and we have this thing called the bar course when we start out as barristers and we get lots of daily tips and advice from barristers and judges and one such judge was recounting her earlier experiences as a barrister and she said at the end of the day 
I would get in my car and she was showing her age. Um, she'd get out a cassette. Oh, wow. What yeah, is that? This is, this is pre-Spotify. I'd have to put um, a link into what a cassette is, I think. <laughs> circa 1970, maybe. And uh, it wasn't a vinyl. I mean, the car did have music yes. playing abilities. Correct. Um, but she'd put in a cassette of the Beach Boys. And she said, you've got to do it because it's the best segue. You get home and no longer is life a courtroom. Because so, there's that separation between church and state. You can get home, yes, refresh. Yes, absolutely. Let's go surfing now, but go home at the same time. <laughs> Californian right? dreams. California dreaming. Now, um, we pose this question to all our guests. Yes. If you had to describe your role in law to a six-year-old, how would you do mm. that? It's a great question. <laughs> Thank you so much. We put a lot of thought into it. Yes. Well, I do have a big family and there are lots of children. And in my experience of engaging with the kids is that they typically want to touch the wig, um, which we wear, which is fine. I'm, I'm happy to show and tell. Um, but if I tried to describe the role, I'd probably say to them, it's like a school debate, okay. um, but on fancy dress day. And then if I still had their attention at this point, I think I'd try and be a bit moralistic and try and teach them something. And I'd say to them, imagine yourself in the playground and there's a new kid or someone who's a bit shy, someone who doesn't have too many friends. Go up and try and help them, maybe speak for them if they're too scared to. And be their advocate in a be way. Be their advocate and I think that's um, that's a really important um, part that barristers and lawyers play. Yes. Looking out for the vulnerable in society and particularly in a pro bono capacity. Too. Yeah, those that can't defend themselves or Absolutely. have the capacity to do so yeah. all the means, etc. Without foreign language or without English language skills, for example, um, new arrivals to Australia. It's very noble sentiment indeed. <laughs> Thank you for that, Talitha. Um, now, another thing that I found very fascinating about yourself from our conversations was um, you learned German. Is that right? Now, yes. am I pronouncing it right at the Goethe Institute? Is Correct. that right? I thought it was. It looks like Goethe, but it's Goethe. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and they like punctuality. So yes. Tell us more about that and where do you find the time to fit all this in? Well, it doesn't mean I always do my homework. Yes. <laughs> um, where do I find the time? It's just a matter of prioritising and for me learning another language is something I've, I've often done as a pastime so it's, it's another passion of mine and um, I, I do it for fun but also as an outlet to to meet other people in society so okay. our, our roles as barristers and lawyers are very much centred in the legal community Correct. and at the moment um, the composition of the class is just so diverse, it's refreshingly diverse. Um, we have, an, um, what is she, a gender politics professor. Oh, wow. We have someone from the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, so that's that's great for inside tips. There you go. The symphony's playing. We have a biologist and we have an antique furniture dealer and me. So, you know, why wouldn't you study German at the Goethe Institute? No, why not? <laughs> and plug to the Goethe Institute. Is there a <laughs> yes. particular phrase that's your favourite in German to Fisch say? Fass. For Fisch. fun. For fun. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And danke schön. Bitte. Bitte schön. And you can say, oh, from memory, bitte you can say for everything, right? So, okay, Pretty it's much, bitter, yes, bitter, yes. bitter, bitter. It's a very polite filler. Oh, bitter. Wonderful. <laughs> now, um, all these projects you're doing, is there another project in the works that you've got? And um, is there another language you're learning or something else or something for work? Like, you just seem so busy all the time. Yeah, well, on the weekend, I actually dabbled in something akin to a Marie Kondo project <gasps> at home. Okay, she's the one that keeps everything tidy, right? Yes, she's correct. She's very good. She's very good. It's a cute little Japanese lady. Yes. And the reason I'm doing this is to pretty much refine systems um, to lead the way to more dynamic projects. Oh, fantastic. And <laughs> yes. her book is Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, I believe. Is yes, that right? Marie yeah, that's Gondo. right. Okay. And do you like to read as well? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, as, as a barrister Especially lawyer, your blogs. Oh, thank you. Oh, my book reviews and things like that. Fantastic. I always think about this sometimes. Like, everyone sort of has their spirit animal or what have you. Like, that represents them. What would be your animal if you could be any animal? Can I ask you what yours would be? Because I'm personally very curious. Oh, uh, I... <laughs> that's a good question, actually. I think I'd like to be a um, an owl because I'd like to be up all night being able to read. Very wise. Yeah, and like, it seems... Everyone likes ours too. Yeah. Or, or they're respected. They respect, oh, right? They can yeah. turn their head exorcist style. I don't know if that's a good <laughs> thing. Um, but if I had the other choice, it would be um, a tortoise because they seem to live for a long time. You know, like, True, be they're able to enduring. enjoy yes. life. What about yourself? Um, so other than owl or turtle... <laughs> so they're taken. <laughs> they're taken. I'd have to say a Swiss mountain dog. Okay. 
because I love Switzerland. I like Switzerland. dogs. Everyone likes dogs, and um, you get to be in Switzerland if you're a Swiss mountain dog. And you're still quite useful because they are used for farming practices. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Fantastic Swiss mountain dog. Yeah. <laughs> are they white or what colour are they? Multicoloured. Multicoloured. Excellent. Yes. To match your character. Yes. Right? Yes. Fantastic. Now, as you know, we're going to put our palms on the table for this one. When it's all said and done, we're going to finish with this question: How would you like to be remembered, Talitha? I'd like to be remembered as someone who's fair, someone who's friendly, and someone who's forward-thinking. It's a nice, very nice sentiment indeed as well. Thank so forward-thinking. That's going to be on the on the edit, edit path when when all is said and done. All right. So well, think, it'll be digital. It, it'll be digital. With yes. It. Okay. <laughs> well, if you ever watched that um, show Black Mirror, have you seen yes, that on Netflix? Yes, yes, it's all those little. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. be that digital thing. There's no going to be tombstones. We'll all be in that yep. little digital device there. But no, it's getting a bit Orwellian now. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. We really thank you enjoyed very the time. Much for your and time. You're doing Lovely to chat fantastic. With you. Thank you, Talitha. Thank you, Helen. No, my pleasure. And if anyone out there wants to be on the show or you want to throw someone under the bus and get them on the show, feel free to put them in the comments, reach out to me. We have a few fantastic um, lawyers and barristers booked in, but by all means, we don't have thousands. We'd love to hear your story. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the LHL Story Series Real Lawyers, Real Stories. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that I think that'll be good. Okay, good. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. That, that all went, went well. I'm really happy. Oh, don't be so surprised. No. <laughs> I've got no idea. <laughs> no, you honestly went fantastic. It's going to be a cracking. I mean, you're so energetic that I kind of like mirror your style. I feel like I'm mirroring your style and so I'm a bit out of the box. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's great. I love yeah. it. I love it. I think, um, and, it, and it comes across really natural. Like we, we got some law in there, which is great. But yes. also we get a little bit more um, questions that you wouldn't normally hear. Like yeah, in, okay. in run of the no, that was, that were good questions actually. Yeah. Yeah. Was there one you were really looking forward to, or one you're a bit daunted about? Um, or? No, I wasn't daunted by any. I, I truly think they were good questions. I think that um, this thing about the, the LinkedIn platform, etc., I could have said a bit more in relation to that because, like, my true motivation in relation to that is is to reach. I think I said it's twofold. So it's partly for me you know, just engaging with the market and also current awareness issues. So I've got to look at the stuff anyway. I may as well just turn mm. my time to, to making an article out of it if I can. But um, it's also trying to spread this message about what the modern barrister is. Okay. And when I was first a lawyer, um, I would go to incredible lengths to try and found, find out what a barrister is and does. And it wasn't easy. There were so many barriers. So And they didn't make it easy for you, right? Like no one like sort of gave you a path and said It's not that doors were closed by any means, it's just that um, I think I, th I think there's this perceived notion of untouchability um, when it comes to the bar. And I mean some of us might perpetuate um, might display conduct which helps to entrench that. I, I accept that. Um, but by and large, most of us are very willing to engage with the community, engage with lawyers, but there just seem to be these issues of access and contactability. And, um, and so I'm just thinking in terms of young lawyers who are out there or people who think that they might want to be a barrister or a lawyer, go stalking. Um, look at my profile. I don't care. I'm writing this stuff for you guys. Mm. Um, so that you get a glimpse at at least one other legal professional's outlook. Okay. Um, and I also have a website, and on the website I say to people, if you're an, um, an aspiring barrister or legal professional, contact me. If you want to contact me um, online, if you want to contact me in person, just contact me and Hi. I've got time to talk to you. Um, particularly women and particularly Indigenous um, Australians, I, I, I see that there's a real gap in the market in terms of representation of those that sector okay. um, in the legal profession. And yeah, don't be too shy and um, so I guess some of my content is bridge building. Yeah, so that's, that's a nice way to put it though, like it's connecting, right? 
Yes, it's it's connecting, it's it's putting information out there and I think young people are so savvy in terms of their use of technology, so we need to use the devices that, that they're using to yeah, get correct. the message out. And I think what you said there in terms of the, the people that want to reach out, if you, if you feel comfortable, we'll put this as a bonus question, yes. if you like, and yeah. then people who want to reach out can. Um, is your email best LinkedIn, what would you say? Um, if people want to reach out, yeah, email is fine and um, my details are publicly available. I do have a of website. Of course, yes. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's an updated website. It looks cracking, right? Oh, like, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I put a lot of thought into how it should be structured so that it's meaningful um, to lawyers and, and to people in the community. Um, but yeah, absolutely, if anyone wants to contact me, particularly those who might be thinking about what it's like as a barrister and should they take the plunge, um, I know what it's like, I've been through that agonising decision of should I or shouldn't I, um, and the best thing to do is just to speak to people who've gone through it and hopefully through that process you get some sort of clarity. So absolutely welcome any conversation that people might wish to have. It might remove some of the fear that people are experiencing. It's like feel the fear but do it anyway because they know a little bit more about it, right? Yes. And that's what it, I guess that's the main thing as humans we have. Yeah, yeah, just, just converse and hopefully eradicate some of those fears. Excellent. Well, feel free to reach out to Talitha. The, um, I'll put some of the um, links to the contacts Thanks, Carl. and the website. My pleasure, absolutely. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> no, that's good.